Well, welcome back. We took a week off there from the Win the Third podcast. We're back here this week. Uh, Matt Finkus, Logan Stever, four-time national champ, world champ, four-time high school champ. I know I go through this all every time. I just like to make you feel nervous because I know you don't like hearing your accolades. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, talking uh, now, we're into the postseason. Uh, you know, this is the time of the year that it's really the most important for everybody. Uh, Big Ten championships on the line. You know, looking at, at trying to set yourself up. Um, whether it's seed wise or position wise, where you're yeah. going to be for the national tournament and uh, here in a couple of weeks in Minneapolis. Um, so let's just go through the weight classes and just kind of break it down and, and see where they're at. We talked about kind of the training and preparation on the last show, but uh, let's, let's talk about just what guys are going to be looking at here this weekend in Piscataway, New Jersey. Uh, we'll start at 125. You got eight NCA automatic bids uh, in the online for this so for people who don't know top eight placers get automatic bids in the tourney if you're not in those top eight you got to try to get in that large bid um <clears throat> malik is here he's the 11th in the pre-seeds here um how tough is it to, for for him i mean he's he's a guy that for ohio state to get on the podium i feel like he's got to get to he's got to get to minneapolis and he's probably going to have to win some matches there so this is a big tournament for him yeah so just to kind of go up uh and what you're saying that so there's eight qualifying spots, right? So for Malik to qualify, he needs to be in the top eight. But for him to get a wild card, he needs to be ninth. Okay. So if it, so they'll wrestle ninth and tenth because uh, there's top eight. So if they if they take the top ten, they wrestle eleven and twelve. Gotcha. Um. So they, a couple of years ago they took thirteen, I think, or they took twelve. So they wrestled thirteenth and fourteenth place, which is crazy. <laughs> crazy yeah. So so he needs to be he needs to be top nine. He needs to be top eight to get a wild card. He needs to be ninth. Um, but for for Malik, the good thing about 125 is now he hasn't had a great year. Um, but the weight class is is I'd say probably maybe the weakest in the in the aside from whole Spencer Lee, yeah, yeah. Besides from <laughs> Spencer Lee, so uh, you know for for Malik, I, I think you know he just has to be positive and, and get on a roll. And and again with his weight class, you know if he gets on a roll, I, I can see him making the semifinals. Yeah. Um, because again, there's there's Spencer Lee, and then there's a lot of other good guys, of course, but guys who have who uh, Malik's beaten in the past. I mean, Malik's beaten uh, in his first round opponent, D. Augustino, mm-hmm. and he's beaten. Uh, uh, I think the second round would be a guy from Minnesota. So yeah, McKee. Beat, McKee. So he yeah. beat him last year. So so guys that he's beaten in the past. Um, so obviously Malik is the underdog, but if you're gonna be the underdog. I guess if you have to wrestle with people you've beaten in the past, that's not a horrible place to be in. Is is Malik kind of still? Is he a year away from kind of growing into the? Because he just when you see him yeah. out there, he looks he looks small for yeah. for the for the weight class, which is ironic because it's the smallest weight class. Yeah, no, I, I don't think so. I, he's not gonna get any bigger. That's just kind of how it is. <laughs> you know, it, I think he can get stronger. Yeah. Um, but I think if the the year away, I mean, it, it could be you know forever a year away sure. from being big enough. So I, I think he he's the right size and he needs to get stronger. And again, you know, if he, if he weighs 132 now, 130, if he starts weighing 137, then it might be too hard to make yeah, weight. Yeah, too hard to make So, cut. so I, I think he, I think he's, uh, he's fine in size. He needs to get stronger and he's done a, you know, he's been working really hard in the weight room these last uh, few weeks to get stronger. So I'm excited to see him. You know, he's got a chance to, Again, wrestle and people. he does. He, he seems to, even last year, he's a guy who, when you get in the tournament time, you know, he, yeah. he shows up. I mean, I think he won, one match or two matches last year at the at the NCAAs. I think he. I'm I know he sure. won one for yeah, sure. Yeah, he won one. Yeah. So I mean that, that that's a big. Uh, he, he seems to be a guy that that kind of can show up at the end of the year. One thirty three is. I mean, it looks like it is maybe the toughest weight class anywhere yeah. right now. I mean, you're looking at at Seth Gross, national champ, uh, RBY is right there, DeSanto there, um, Sebastian Rivero finalist yeah. last year is like the sixth seed. Uh, or fifth seed, yeah, and I mean Jordan Decatur coming in, it, it, you know he's got a got a tough draw. I mean he yeah. they, they put him down at fourteen, but um, I mean you got seven automatic bids coming out of this, and man, this is going to be a tough weight class to to get out of. Yeah, I mean so so for Jordan, right? It, it's it's a weird weight class. The bottom five are all kind of kind of bunched together, but of course he 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 didn't wrestle any of them, but the guy from Maryland who he yeah. lost to. So that guy's thirteen seed because he lost everybody else. Puts Jordan at 14 and puts him against uh, DeSanto first round, which is obviously we saw that once and it was uh, not good. It was not good, right? Tough, yeah. tough for Jordan. So, you know, for Jordan, it's uh, you know obviously we would love for him to pull the upset. Um, 
And I, I know that his talent is there. You know, who knows if he's ready? I guess he can show us, right? I I wrestled with Jordan, and I know that he's awesome. So, but until we see it, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's hard to to make that prediction. So, you know, just kind of looking. You know, he's gonna have to win. I think three matches in the backside. Yeah. Um. But again, you know, it, it's it's guys who are good, not all stars. I mean, I, I think those those top four. We're going to be in the semifinals, um, so then the loser, the loser of those, are in the consolation semifinals. So if Jordan would have to wrestle any of those guys, he'd already be top six. Yeah. So I think he's gonna to have to win three matches um, um, on the backside. If of course he loses, uh, now obviously if he if he beats DeSanto, then uh, yeah, you know, things whole, are looking whole, things yeah, are whole looking different really story. Good, yeah. But uh, yeah, so it's gonna be he, he's gonna to have to win you know three on the backside, and I think that he's gonna to have to be you know obviously we want him to win. First round, but if he loses, it's got to be short memory and yeah, and get you know. and get back. And we talked about kind of that that mentality of how you wrestle back. I mean, for guys at this college level, and and again, you know, Jordan's a true freshman, so he's not had to wrestle the backside of, of a yeah. bracket, you know, yeah. for a long, long time, if ever. Mm-hmm. So this is a new experience for him, and he's going to have to prepare for that and make sure that he's ready to go. Yeah. Uh, looking at 141, I mean, this this looks to be kind of the top two in everybody else, obviously. Uh, Nick Lee, Luke Pletcher, we talked about that match. Kind of, you know, Luke looked like he kind of ran out of gas, just mm-hmm. didn't look like he was um, used to that kind of pace and used to that yeah. kind of thing. I quite possibly can see a rematch here for, for that. Um, and, you know, again, these are the two top guys in the country. It's yeah. kind of it, – it is a – Pretty, I mean, I don't want to say a big separation because you never know. Everyone's talented there, but it looks even on the national stage, it's these two guys and kind of everybody else. Um, what do you, if you're Luke Pletcher coming in to prepare, and we talked about this, like you do wrestle to beat Nick Nick Lee, yeah. you are preparing to beat Nick Lee, you know, going through the rest of the bracket, and then what changes have you made in your preparation to go to to prepare to see Nick Lee again? Yeah, I mean, so I think the changes is he's been doing. Uh just a lot of things to try to combat all the stuff that Nick Lee does. I mean, uh, whether it's his shot or his defense um, and uh, just kind of strategies on bottom. Um, and then just for the for Saturday, just getting through the day. I think the first guy, it will be from uh, Purdue, uh, um, Purdue, Illinois. Um, but the guy he's wrestled a couple times before, tough guy, but he's been able to score points on. And then the three seed, um, Urin, who actually lost to the four seed this year. Um, Chad Red. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Maybe and Red. he's handled those guys. Yeah. Down so the line Muir has well. kind of been injured all year. So he. So I think Luke's beat him in the past. And but Nick Lee and Luke both have not. Uh, not wrestled. Uh, Muir in this year. I don't believe. So Muir will be tough. Um, but of course Luke knows that. So just getting. Uh, getting uh you know a good solid match and feeling good and then getting ready for how Sunday. important yeah how important is this for Luke mentally if the if the rematch happens in the in the finals how important is that to go into the, into the NCAs knowing that you have a a 1-1 split rather than being down yeah. two matches to nothing i mean i i think it can help mentally um but i i know our coaches do a really good job of you know we know that we want to do really well at the Big Tens, but it isn't the end. Yeah. So, I mean, Luke, Luke could lose again. He could lose early. He could lose whenever. Um, or he could win. And it, and it, you know, it doesn't have too big of an impact on uh, the following, well, I guess, two weeks later. So, I, I think just for for Luke, seeing what, you know, if the strategies he, he's kind of been doing the last three weeks uh, are, are working. Um, if so, continue on that. And if, if not, learn. You know, learn, okay. This didn't work. Okay, I need to figure out this out. So, yeah. so it'll be important. Obviously, you want to win. Um, you know, win win a Big Ten title. Um, that would be you know great for Luke. Um, but I I think he'll be you know just let's see let's see if the adjustments I made are working. Yeah. Looking at 149, Sammy Sasso, the number one seed there. Um, you know, the two guys behind him, Lugo, he beat last second at Iowa. Uh, Brayton Lee, he beat at Minnesota. Um, you know, not a lot of problems for him with the rest of this uh, this group that he's had during the course of the season. And, and Sammy has looked like a guy who's gotten better as the season has gone on and really finding better ways to score, more comfortable kind of in his shoes a little yeah. bit out on the map. Yeah, uh, Sammy's done such a good job. I mean, his weight's under control, his conditioning's good, he's strong. 
Uh, I mean, he, he's he's really he's really impressed me with his work. Um, so I'm excited to see him compete. I'm interested in the eight nine matchup with Verclaren and uh, Yaya Thomas from mm-hmm. Northwestern. Yaya Thomas is really really good. Yeah. Um, he, I think he's been injured all year, so a, a very a very tough uh, ninth seed. Um, so we'll see if Verclaren can get past him. Then uh, we'll set up another uh, rematch with Sammy and Verclaren. Um, you know, in that match again, Verclaren's tough, stingy. You know, doesn't do much. So I like to see Sammy get a takedown. Um, and then I think if that happens, then he'll kind of force Verclaren to to take some shots and, and make some take take some risks. Um, and then the semifinal. Um, oh, it could be could be Store. Um, for Michigan. Yeah, for Michigan. Um, who he wrestled early in the year, and uh, he's kind of started off redshirting, and then he, uh, then he came came back. So, uh, yeah, interesting bracket where it could be, you know, the uh, the quarterfinal is tougher than the semifinals. Yeah. Um. So interesting. Um. And then on the other side, of course, Brayton Lee and uh, Lugo will be a great match. Yeah, that'll be a great match if that gets to that semifinal as well. Uh, looking at one fifty seven. <laughs> Man, tough road for Eli here. Only six automatic bids coming out of 157. Um, you kind of have the top two guys here in Deacon and Caleb Young, but you know, probably a good thing for Eli. I mean, yeah, Kendall Coleman at three for Purdue. Not a lot of just like superstar talent as we mm-hmm. as you've talked about yeah. behind those top two guys. Um, so you know, Eli's coming in the 11th seed a chance for him to, to kind of get in. He's going to be a guy who's going to have to win some matches to, to, to make it happen for him. Yeah, so he'll have to be seventh if he wants to get the wild card or, of course, be top six to uh, get the automatic bid. Um, but, man, I, I, I like Eli. I like Eli's placement. I, I think, you know, away from those top two guys is good. Um, I think his uh, sixth seed um, is a winnable match. I'm... I'm, I'm Struggling to figure out who it is. The sixth um, seed, the sixth seed is Jake Tucker from Michigan State. Yeah. yeah. So I, again, I, I think that's a winnable match. You know, put him in the quarterfinals, and then uh, you know Kendall Coleman, young guy. I, mm-hmm. I think that you know Eli has pre- pre- uh, presents a lot of problems with his defense, um, and and he's building a lot of confidence these last couple of weeks. So you know, I, I think that we, it's been a while. Since we've seen Eli Russell, uh, and I'm excited. I'm excited to watch him because he's he's done a really good job, and it was very stressful um, for him. I know just w- with you know who's going to start the wrestle offs and tournaments yeah. and, and going to duels, and you know so it was stressful for a lot of people. Um, stressful for him, and uh, now that the stress is gone, I, I I'm hoping. Uh, to see what I'm seeing, you know, when I, when I watch him practice. Yeah, because I mean, he's the guy now. I mean, you you can go out there and wrestle confidently. Yeah, and just yeah, you're in. This yeah. is the end of the season. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's all on you. Uh, want to obviously thank our sponsor, uh, Financial Providence Group. Uh, if you're looking for final expense insurance, you can go to fpgroup.us, and uh, they will take care of you. And if you're looking for a new career, uh, you can always give these guys a call. They're always looking for registered agents uh, or to register agents and get you signed up and uh, and then on a new career path. You can call nine three. 7414-6230. That's 937-414-6230 or go to fpgroup.us. Uh, looking at the back half of this uh, Big Ten bracket here, 165, eight automatic bids coming in. You've got some really top four talent there with the top four guys, you know, defending national champ Vincenzo Joseph, or not defending national champ, but two-time national champ yeah. Vincenzo Joseph. Alex Marinelli, who's beaten Joseph a couple times, got caught in a six-point move in the dual meet and still only lost, I think, seven to six or eight seven. It yeah, was a one-point uh, yeah, match. The, yeah. At the end, Evan Wick, who they've had some t- big battles. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah White, who we've seen, you know, is an explosive wrestler and can score at times. Mm-hmm. Don't know, you know, if that ankle injury from the Ohio State duel is still there. And then you've got Ethan Smith there sitting at the five seed. Um, so when you look at kind of how this shakes out for him – with a possible four or five matchup in the quarters with a guy who, you know, you watch that Nebraska duel with Ethan and, and, and white and man, it just looked like a little bit of mental lapse, taking a bad shot at a bad time against a, a seasoned veteran guy yeah. who was able to lock up a cradle and get a pin when you thought you kind of, I mean, it looked to, to all outside viewers that you had him on the ropes. All you needed to do was just kind of keep pushing the pace. Even if you get into overtime, you kind of have to feel good yeah. about where you were at with that. Um, obviously Ethan's got to go through, you know, a, another match to get there, but, but looks fairly good for Ethan Smith with this draw. 
Yeah, I mean, I I think you know Ethan's had a good year, and I think he is uh, rewarded or, or or given right the correct seed, a, a good seed where he's been in two absolute heaters with uh, Isaiah White. Um, so he gets through his first match, and then you know again he's always a takedown away. So mm-hmm. he gets a takedown, he's in the semifinals. You know, then it's okay. He's you know solidified his his national championship placement. Yeah. Um, and he'd probably earn himself a, a decent seed. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm excited. I mean, I, I think anytime you have a chance to avenge losses, especially ones that are really, really close, you should be excited about because I mean, again, he's always so, so close uh, to winning that match in, in Vegas and the dual meet. So, uh, I yeah. gotta think he's motivated more after that dual meet because yeah, I mean, yeah, you kind of have you try to have to have a short memory, but man, that's one that you go back and watch that if you're Ethan Smith and you're like, that's a match I should have won, yeah. and just you know that little mistake. I if I don't make me that mistake, I'm winning that match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so as bad as that mistake was, and as bad as I'm sure he felt, it will not be remembered if he can finish these last two tournaments out strong. Yeah, so. absolutely. Looking at 174, this is a Kind of a top heavy weight class again. You got Kemmerer and you got Mark Hall. Uh, Kemmerer the one seed, Mark Hall the two. Kemmerer beat him up pretty bad in the dual meet. Um, Mark Hall, obviously, super talented guy, NCAA champ, three time finalist. Um, you got Caleb Romero there as a six seed. Um, but I, I think that when you look at, at everyone above him, kind of, you know, three, four, and five, there's no one there that I, I mean, yeah, uh, Labriola did beat him at, in the dual yeah. meet, but. I mean, there's no one there that Caleb Romero can't beat to get into kind of that that third spot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think Dylan Lighty's had a really good year, so that that'll be a tough quarterfinal match. Um, so, but they haven't wrestled this year, so I'm excited to see him wrestle. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, see where he can be. And and, and again, I, I think that you know, get to the semis, right? Win that match, get to the semis, um, and then Mark Hall. I, I just I want to see that match. I want to see the full match, right? Yeah. Obviously, Mark Hall is awesome. He he's won everything. Um, so I, I'm, you know, I I always believe in Caleb, but I I want to see the match. I want to I want to see the match and see really where not the 48 second version. Right, of, right. I, I want to see, see where time. where where Caleb's at. So, uh, I I think Caleb has really done a really good job. Obviously, a very tough last match of the regular season mm-hmm. with Mark Hall. Um, but yeah, and. If the seeds hold tr- uh, true, uh, I'm excited for the rematch of Mark Hall and, and Kemmer. I, I think that Kemmer, I think Mark Hall got tired. Yeah. Um, and, and probably because of the arena a little bit, just kind of the, the moment. So I'm excited to see, you know, if if Kemmer can do it again, then I will, will be very, very impressed. <laughs> be a believer. <laughs> yeah. Looking at 184, 10 spots here. Um, so you got a lot of opportunities to qualify for the NCAA tournament. Uh, your top seed, Aaron Brooks. Um, you know, Rocky's sitting there at six. So, you know, looking at Abe Assad again in, in the possible quarterfinal matchup, um, which was a match that, uh, you know. One, one takedown at yeah, the end. Yeah, again, one takedown away. Um, I mean, watching that, Rocky didn't wrestle his best match there and was still one takedown away. And he's been a guy that we talked about has is, is gotten – progressively better as the season got mm-hmm. has gotten on ton of matches for him this year wrestling yeah. tons of open tournaments yeah. and stuff so a lot of mat time for him but coming off an injury um and this is a uh, this is a weight class where you know a great experience because there's a lot of guys really evenly matched in that yeah. weight class for him yeah i mean i i think rocky is in a great place um to, to wrestle the guy you lost to one takedown away in an, in a neutral arena in the quarterfinals um i feel really good about it and, and Rocky's do, Rocky's been doing such a great job, just uh, you know, getting better and better every every week. I mean, he's only had, I mean, the match against Penn State, he didn't wrestle well, um, but he hasn't had too many matches where he hasn't wrestled well, especially since January. So, um, I'm excited. I'm excited for Rocky. I, I think this weight class is a uh, is a weight where it's it's tough. Um, but I think Rocky could, could blow it open. I think, I mean, when you look at it from the outside end, it's just been those momentary lapses that he's yeah. had. You know I mean? Even you go back to the Minnesota match against Webster. Yeah. Just, you know, that, that little tilt. You right. Know, the, the, those two points there where, you know, if you're on top of your game and you're you're staying mm-hmm. focused, that doesn't yeah. happen to right, you. Right, right. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it's going to be interesting to see how he progresses in this, yeah. in this tournament and continues to go. Uh, 197, six NCAA bids on the line. Colin Moore, number one seed. It's kind of Colin Moore and everyone else at this point. 
that 197, maybe even across the nation. I mean, yeah. you look at him, um, the way he's performed this year reminds me a lot of Miles Martin of last year. Yeah. You're just, you're hoping that the same outcome doesn't come right, uh, yeah. later on in March. But, uh, but Colin, it seems, has been just really focused you know, much better in his, in his, you know, use of, of his abilities. And I mean, if you had to pick a guy out of this group um, that, that might challenge him here this weekend, who, who do you think that that might be? Um, I, I think it could be Warner. Uh, I think that Warner doesn't do too much. And I think, you know, he'll be coached pretty well to, to not do much. Um, so, you know, Schultz has given Colin decent matches in, in, in the past because of his ability to, to wrestle hard the whole, whole time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that, that'd be a probably pretty sure it's a semifinal match, but that, that'd yeah. be a good semifinal match. Um, Schultz and, and Warner. And I think if Warner and Colin wrestle, it'll be, uh, Colin shooting and Warner doing nothing, Defending. Ho- hoping that Colin shoots himself out. So for Colin and, and similar to Schultz, you know, cause Schultz has gotten him tired in the past. It, it's just. Uh, pick good shots, you yeah. know, and if maybe you don't shoot 30 times, you shoot, you know, 18 times, you know, but just better shots or 12, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so stuff like that. Uh, I feel good about Colin. He, he is, he's, he's done a good job and, and he's, you know, I think learning from, learning from the past. Um, so. Last one, the big guys, seven NCAA bids on the line. Ga- Gas tank Gary slides in pre seed right underneath that at the yeah. six seed, um, which, you know, it, it, it's interesting kind of how that, that sets up. I mean, the top three guys at this weight class, really, really good. I mean, Mason Paris from Michigan, Gable Steveson, um, Cassiope has, has looked really well yeah. at, at times. And this is, um, you know, it's going to be a quarterfinal matchup against Iowa uh, for Gary to try to get in that semifinals. You know, the early takedowns and then, it, it, you know, happened and and i think it kind of took the wind out of his sails a little yeah, bit yeah i think he had quick quick uh quick count for back points too. yeah i'm not 100 I'm percent sure on that to rewatch it but uh, yeah i i think again gary is, has had a good year really good year so he needs to continue on that win his first round and then against cassiope you know it, our uh our coaches will have a good or try to have a good strategy of course um and, and it's, it's a another situation where gary will be undersized um, by a lot, but you know what he'll he'll lack in in size. You know he'll he'll make up for with his effort. I think so. I'm excited to see that. I mean, Gary, obviously, you know the match is only seven minutes. So if if the last match maybe went ten minutes, um, <laughs> you know, kind of kind of talking about things that yeah, is, is it not going to happen? Impossible. But but Gary Gary felt good at the end of that match where you know he was starting to get Cassiope a little bit tired. So he needs to put the pressure on earlier if he's yeah. going to have a chance. You know if he's going to. Uh, have a chance and, and get the upset. Um, I think he's got to do better with his defense earlier, not get up takedowns, and better hand fighting. So to to get Cassiope tired, similar to his Neville's match, yeah, he'd have to wrestle a similar match to, to that. Uh, we'll come back here after this short break. We'll do a couple predictions here and see where uh, Logan thinks they're going to come out. Uh, what to thank our sponsor, Wrestled Away, the Lee Kemp story. Uh, you can find that on Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, all the places you can download videos on demand. And also, you're, you can go to the Gateway Film Center, their website. We'll be doing a special screening next weekend at 3 o'clock in between sessions of the Ohio State Championships, Ohio State Wrestling Championships. Uh, limited seats are available. I know tickets are on sale right now. You can go to Ohio Gateway, uh, filmcenter.com, and Find that link, click on it. It's a three o'clock showing. Like I said, it'll be in between matches and uh, just a great film about one of Ohio's own two-time state champ from uh, from um, Chardon, Ohio, and went on to be almost the first four-time uh, NCAA champ. Lost in a referee's decision back when they used to do that referee's That's decision That's against the defending national champ. Um, I mean, it, it is crazy when you when you go back and obviously I was a producer of the movie, so I know the story, but when you go to overtime, they do the overtime periods. And if no one still scored, they'd bring the referees together for three referees and they just vote. And he lost a split decision. That's how I think uh, Kurt Angle won uh, the gold. Yeah. Six. I think referee's decision. Referee's that's, decision. That's and then was able to go wild. on. And at the time, 101 match win streak after that and wow. went on for uh, for a long time. And then, uh, you know, incredible story though. So if you got the chance, make sure you get over there and see that. All right. Uh, prediction time. Yeah, here we go. One twenty-five. Uh, I think, you know, I think Spencer Lee walks away with this and, uh, in pretty convincing fashion. Um, 
who do you kind of see, you know, where do you see Malik finishing in this? Here? Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll do kind of a top yeah. two, and then where do you think the Ohio State guy will so, fall in? Yeah, so I mean, I, I love the Buckeyes, so I'm gonna be you know Buckeye Buckeye <laughs> favorite here because those guys are, are are all my guys here. So, um, but I I think Spencer Lee will win it. I, I think, think it's McKee in the in the finals with him. I see. I think it will be Schroeder. Schroeder, okay. Because I think Malik is gonna beat McKee. Okay. So I, I have Malik at uh, fifth. I think he'll, okay. he'll I, I don't know who he, he would fall into after Schroeder, but I I, I believe in Malik. So Okay. I, I mean I think that, that he does wrestle well. I think he finds his way yeah. into that top eight. I don't know where exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. with the back end you fall, but I agree. I think Malik finds his way into the top eight there and gets an automatic bid. Uh one thirty three we talked about, man, this is just a loaded, loaded weight class, especially the top three guys. Uh, Seth Gross, RBY, and Austin DeSanto. I mean, even with the five seed with with Sebastian Rivera. Yeah. Um, I I I think that Gross wins this this uh, weight class. I think it's DeSanto probably getting uh, in the finals with him. I think he beats RBY. Um, I do see. I think Jordan Decatur, you know, can sneak into the third and fourth place match in this. I think that, you know, I think it's going to be tough with him with DeSanto. I don't see him pulling that upset off in the quarterfinals. Um, but I do see him coming back and possibly getting an upset of a guy dropping down yeah. from that semifi- from that semifinal match. Um, you know, possibly a Sebastian Rivera if he ends up on that side. Yeah, I have I have gross over RBY in the finals. I think RBY is going to beat DeSanto in the semis. Um I think uh, I think Gross will beat Sebastian Rivera um, in the semis, um, but it, it, I don't know that that, that one's tough because Sebastian can can wrestle well on his feet. Yeah, I, I just I, I watched his last match against Maryland and I didn't think that he uh, looked like he was in his in his best form. Um, so that side note, he's got to wrestle this weekend Big Tens, the following weekend. The Olympic trial, the Olympic qualifier in Ottawa to qualify Puerto Rico to go to the Olympics at 125 and a half. Jeez. <laughs> so he goes 33, 125 and a half, and the next week is nationals. Oh so, my goodness, that's so rough. so th- that's also weighing on. I, I think he's got a long stretch, um, um, and, and I see Jordan qualifying. Um, I, I have to re look through the bracket. I, and maybe what they say, are they taking seven? Uh, they are taking seven. Yes. Yeah. So I, I see, I see Jordan qualifying. I, I see him have a tough time, um, with DeSanto and I really hope I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I see him storming through the backside. I, I think he's going to upset some people. And I think that you, he's going to, like you said, he's going to get people who are, who are going down and he's going to be, be coming up, yeah. coming up. That, I, I think that's one of the hardest things to do. Is because I've been on both sides of that, and I mean, obviously, my high school wrestling career a long, long, long time ago. But I've been that guy who's dropped down out of the semis, yeah. And I've also been the guy who's been coming all the way back through the 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 other bracket. It is much tougher, in my opinion, to drop down from the yeah. semis than be that guy who's on a two three match winning streak coming through the back end of the bracket. Uh, One forty one. I, I I think it's going to be. I think Luke does get him. I think it's going to be Luke winning that. I think Nick Lee uh, with the second place finish there. I agree. I think it's going to set up an awesome uh, uh, tiebreaker in yeah. uh, Minneapolis. So I I have Luke uh, in a, in a close one. And then I'm, and then I'll just be ready to go for. Yeah, that'll Nationals. be a good one. That'll, that'll be, be good one. 149. I think Sammy does win this. I think he's just he's progressed and got better every year. I think it's going to be Brayton Lee though. I th- I think that um, I think that Lee matches up better with you know Lugo's a guy who's just he's trying to win four or three matches. He's trying to win mm-hmm. you know just those one point matches. I think Brayton Lee has more offense that he can bring to the table and and really try to open it up for him. Yeah, I agree with that. I I have uh I have Sammy over Lee in, in the finals. I think Sammy will be able to get a takedown on, on Lee early, um, and then his defense will be uh will be on point. So I, I like that. I like I like Lee over Lugo. I think he's gonna push the pace. Looking at one fifty seven, um, I'll tell you what, Deacon has has looked um. Kind of, I feel like it looked like he's had kind of an up and down year. You know, has looked really good at times. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been consistent in winning everything. Um, a couple matches have been maybe closer because of how bad he beat some people earlier in the year. Yeah. Um, you sometimes you just think that they're always going to beat everybody really bad, and obviously it's just not not always the case. Um, so yeah, one fifty seven. Uh, 
you know, I, I'm gonna take Young over over Deacon though in the finals. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not <laughs> going to. <laughs> I'm not going to. I, I think um, I think Eli. Um, what what seat is Eli? Eli's the 11, so he'll yeah, have he'll, to wrestle Tucker uh, from Michigan State in the quarters. Yeah, which I think I agree. I think that's a winnable match, and if then if you win that match, um, then I think that that you can. Or not in the quarters, but the, but the round before the quarters. Then you're looking at at Kendall Coleman in He's the quarterfinals. Yeah. Um. But but I you know I mean I think it's tough if there's a if there's a weight class that I think really is going to be rough for Ohio State. It's this just because I think the automatic bids. I mean you only get six automatic. Yeah, the bids six here. automatic bids gonna be tough. It's it's going to be tough, and and I I think if Eli makes it out, it'll be it'll be a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. So I I, I I'll put I'll put uh Eli Eli getting. Uh, I, I do think he'll get a wild card if he gets seventh. So I'm gonna say uh, it's hard for me to without a bracket to yeah. say a prediction. I think Eli's gonna make it, whether it's straight up or wild card. And I have uh, uh, Northwestern you got Deacon, Deacon over, over over Kendall Coleman. Oh, Kendall. But Coleman. I but I <laughs> it's funny because because I have Kendall Coleman because I think Kendall Coleman can beat uh Young. Okay. They, they, they had a really close match. Um, but I, I'm I'm not really sold on. Uh, kind of coming over Eli. Yeah, I because I just think that Eli's defense it presents a lot of problems, and if Kendall can can blow through him, then then yes, he'll be in good shape. But I think a couple a couple stops by Eli get someone tired. Yeah. So so I, I'll say that, but man, I, I I'm not. Uh, it's nice when you you predict both sides, <laughs> so then you're never wrong, right? Yeah. But I, I'm not ready to say uh, you know. Eli's not going to beat Kendall Coleman. I, I think that he's had a really good two weeks, and uh, yeah, man, that's tough. Cause that's that, a cause, tough cause, one because <laughs> then it makes it tough because because Eli over Young. Um, but again, that was a close match. I, Eli didn't didn't seemingly have have a way to win that match, but it was still I think four to one. Yeah. Um. So I'll say, I'll say, uh, uh, I'll I'll, I'll say. Man, it's tough. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I got Eli qualifying. Okay. I got Eli qualifying. We, we won't put you too much on the yeah, spot. Yeah, you got to yeah. go back and wrestle with them. You don't want to right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 165, you got eight spots open here. Um, I think you're going to see Joseph and Marinelli again in the finals. Um, and I think I think Ethan gets in the semis. I think he I think he beats Isaiah White in the quarters. I agree I think he finally that. gets over yeah. that. Um, I, I think that, that the matchup with, with Joseph is just – it's not a good stylistic matchup mm-hmm. for Ethan. Yeah. Um, Joseph is just so good on defense. Hips are so good, so solid. Um, I, I think it's going to be tough for, for Ethan to score on him consistently. You know, he might get a takedown here or there, but then with Joseph, you're always in jeopardy of, of you know, a four or six point move at some point. Um, but that being said, I, you know, I, I think I see Ethan in the semifinals and obviously making the, an automatic bid. Yeah. But I, I, I think it's Joseph and Marinelli. And I think Marinelli gets him this time in the finals. Yeah, I I would have to see the bracket, but I'm I'm just I was trying to play it in my mind. I I see it as Ethan wrestling Isaiah White twice. I, I think that I think that they'll split matches. I think they'll they'll wrestle in, in the, the quarters in the quarters and for third and fourth. Okay. Because I think one of them is going to beat Wick. Okay. I think or because I think Wick will lose. In, Wick will in lose the, to Marinelli. Yes, and then I think one of them will will. Uh, well, Wick. yeah, because that would cross bracket them. Yeah. In the quarters, so then. Yeah, so I I don't know what what it is, and uh, but I, I think. Uh, Ethan's top four. I think Ethan's top four. I think four. so too. Yeah. Um, and and I, and I like that, and that that'll give him a, a good seed. Uh, for nationals. One seventy four. You got nine spots open. Um, you've got uh Kemmerer, Hall, kind of the two ones that are that mm-hmm. are everyone's looking at. Um, to be in those finals. Uh, to be there. I I think Caleb Romero. Um, again, it is, it's, it's, you know, can he beat the guy from Purdue? I mean, yeah. you know, in, in that quarterfinal matchup to get in the semis against Hall and then, you know, can we see that full match with, with Hall? I think he qualifies no matter what. Um, I don't, I don't know if, if, if I haven't seen enough. I think Caleb's definitely capable of being in that semifinal match. So yeah. With Mark Hall. Yeah. I, I have Caleb top four. I have Caleb top four. I, I, I think that it's, 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 it's not always easy to see how, how, how he's going to get there. Um, just because we, I think he can beat Lighty. I think he'll beat Lighty. Um, but Lighty has, has had a good year. He's mm-hmm. tough. Um, so if he loses that one, I, I think that he, he can come back um, and, and be top four. I think it will be tough to beat Mark Hall. Um, but I think Hall beats Kimmerer this time around too. I do too. I think, I, I, I think if they're in the finals, I think I think Hall beats Kimmerer, yeah, which I, would set up a great uh, 
you know, NCAA tournament. 184, 10 spots on the line. I think Rocky definitely gets out and qualifies with this unless something, you know, just really crazy would happen with him. Um, but this is an interesting one. You don't really have a clear, you know, superstar at this mm-hmm. weight coming out of the uh, out of the Big Ten. I mean, is this, Rocky the ten seed? Sorry, Rocky's the six seed. So oh, Rocky seed. would would uh, you know quarterfinal match against Abe Asad if the if the seeds hold from Iowa. Um, I mean, I could see, I could very easily see Rocky in the semifinals and possibly even you know, Kathy of Michigan State has has looked good yeah. all year, but. I don't know the the kind of the level of competition. It, it it doesn't seem like they've been that he's had to go up against you know elite yeah. level guys at this point. Um, I mean, I could see Rocky from anywhere from being you know in the finals yeah. to, to being in that wrestling for fifth or sixth. Um, I do think if if I had to go with my my putting money on it prediction, I think it would be Aaron Brooks and and Abasad in the finals and yeah. Brooks winning. Yeah, so I think Caffey beat Abasad in, in the dual meet, um, which is why he's seated ahead of him. Mm-hmm. Um, I I am a homer, Buckeye yeah. homer, um, but I do feel really good about Rocky. I uh, I think he's going to make the finals. I, I think that he's going to beat Assad in an awesome quarterfinal match, and the crowd is going to be loving it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, then, then I think he's going to win uh, a close match with Caffey. I think that – he he he's he's done a really good job lately, and I could be wrong. It could be the homer in me speaking, but I feel I feel good about Rocky. And again, the weight class, man, it's not a it's not a crazy. It's not a runaway for anybody. No, no. no. so yeah. so I, yeah, I feel good about Rocky in the finals. Uh, one ninety seven. I think Colin wins this one going away. I don't think that there's going to be much. I'm with you. I think it's probably Warner that he gets in the finals. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't see much dissension in this, uh, you know, weight class. There's just, there's not a lot there other than, yeah. I mean, you got Colin, you know, Schultz is good. Yes. Warner's good. Yes. But then after that, it, man, it, it kind of really falls off. Yeah. I have Colin. I, I think that he'll, he'll, he, he's, he's smart now. I think three years ago, not that he wasn't smart, but uh, three years ago, I think he would have, you know, Russell a wild and crazy match and maybe got himself tired and, mm-hmm. and been in a heater um, and, and lost. I think he'll 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 wrestle controlled match. Um, wrestle smart and, and win. Um, whoever he has, it obviously it makes it to the finals. Uh, a controlled match. Yeah. You know? He beat Schultz. I think five to two earlier in the year, and I can see something similar. Rides him out. Some you know just controlled. You know and can move on. Two eighty five. Um... So we talked about Gaston Gary would have Cassiope in the quarters to to make that semifinal matchup. Seven automatic bids coming out. I think he gets out of this this uh, this bracket. Um, you know the the two guys ahead of him that I they think it's that he can beat if he sees them. Uh, Hilger and Jensen. I think in, in mm-hmm. both those matches he didn't, especially the the uh, the match against Jensen just didn't wrestle smart. Yeah, Jensen match. I, I I think that he can definitely get back. Hilger is is a tough one. I I really like that he is uh, against Cassiope, and mm-hmm. not Hilger. I think Hilger presents just different problems for him. Yeah. Um, and, and Cassiope's young. Um, um. So, I I feel good about that. I think Gary's gonna qualify. Um. Um. And, and I and I'm really excited for his quarterfinal match. I, I can see him winning that match and making it to the semifinals, and then in the finals, I I'm very really excited. I don't know who's going to win. The way that uh, Paris has looked, really Paris good. has looked. Yeah. I have Paris, but I think that Gable is the best wrestler. Um, but uh, that my mind changed a little bit after watching Paris and Cassiope, and I think that Paris is going to put too much pressure on him. Yeah, Give I mean him. that's that's I think that's this thing with with Stevenson when you've watched him in matches that he's lost, whether it was last year. In the Big Tens, and and you know, even looking at, at what he did at NCAs, when he's pressured and a lot, he gets tired, and it seems like mm-hmm. he really, yeah, he drops off quick. Talent wise, I I agree with you. I think man, the guys, I mean, as talented as they yeah, come. yeah, he he's he's a very good wrestler. So we'll see if he can prove the people, I guess, like us who think that. You know, see, I think he wins. I, I think Stevenson yeah. wins. Yeah, yeah. that would be. I mean. It wouldn't mainly surpri- because it's a it Michigan guy. Yeah. And I don't want to. I don't want yeah, Michigan yeah. to win anything. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't <laughs> surprise me. I think both guys are, are really good. All right. Well, we'll be back next week. We'll recap what happened at the Big Tens. We'll take a look a little bit ahead at the NCAA's. We won't have a clearer picture uh, just yet, but we'll, again, we'll recap what happened with the Buckeyes and the Big Ten. This has been the Win the Third Podcast here on Letterman Row. Thanks.
Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We got Letterman Live, we've got the practice report, we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buck IQ with Zach Bourne. For sure. We got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. We got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State Athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.